I think the most important consideration is that <clears throat> the new tax reform act in the United States uh, still needs to be studied a bit. But before you even do any transfer pricing uh, you know, anymore, you want to decide what the best strategy is for minimizing taxes. And you may find that a lot of the policies you had, in fact, in prior years will change. So you're going to get into this. You'll start doing some modeling based on the new law and look at other jurisdictions as well. And after you come up with those answers, you may want to change functions in different jurisdictions in a way to allow you to perhaps move more stuff to the United States and in the long run pay less tax, especially taking into account there will be no secondary tax on dividends. That's it. Thanks, Jim Guadiana. Evan Cohen, David Hutchings, uh, I don't know who, which of you wants to go first with your uh, key takeaways, but uh, please go ahead. Sure. Uh, I'll take it, David. Um, I think we would say one of the key takeaways, and this was a focus of our presentation, was the need for this kind of nuanced uh, factual analysis uh, that you know really sets the basis for your functional analysis um, of the activities performed at home and abroad. I think that's important both for some of the points you know, that Jim was talking about in terms of the changes uh, to the U.S. tax code uh, about what you might want to say is now at home or re-sorting those functions, but also to um, preempt and, and help uh, rebut any challenges by the service or, or or the tax authorities in terms of where the functions are and that because of that you've properly grounded uh, your analysis, um, especially when it comes to things like intangibles, you know, to Justin's points about how so much of the value is now intangible value and in this new economy it's not just about where your factories are. So I think that's what we would say is the kind of main takeaway is the importance of identifying the key functions that generate uh, those profits and then really proving that up uh, both when the study is done and then if necessary on uh, rebuttal too. Evan Cohen. Actually I just echo David's point about how critical uh, a functional analysis is um, and, and the proper documentation given these new uh, the new guidelines. So uh, you know, make sure your practitioner, if you're in litigation, uh, really has a handle on how to how to deal with the the functional analysis, how to present it in a you know in an, in an arm's length using um, using all the proper uh, benchmarking. Um, and and the different uh, the different ways to actually benchmark the returns on commodity and uh, and non commodity functions. I thank you for that, Evan. And uh, we'll uh, wrap up with the key takeaways of uh, Jason Kosmarski. Justin, sorry, sorry, Justin. No, no worries, Sal. Um, just you know, wrapping up, I think we, we all saw from all the speakers how uh, large a percentage intangible value is in today's economy, particularly in the digital economy. I think there, um, we covered there's some negative impacts, uh, particularly in regards to capital gain treatments for self-created patents. I think that really is a devastating blow to tech and pharma companies that uh, will lead to a lot of different tax structuring challenges. Um, you know, for, for acquisitions going forward and for transfer pricing. So there were some good things, a lot of great things, but a lot of uh, negative impact, particularly in regards to self-created uh, patents and inventions from the new act. And when you really consider how much intangibles are, 90, 90% of public companies, 80% of more private companies, I think my second takeaway is look at these transfer pricing considerations by doing, first and foremost, an internal or formal valuation. I think that gives a sense of where the cash flows will be. Remember, all these multinational uh, enterprises are being forced to share their permanent file with other tax jurisdictions who will see the cash flows. So understanding the valuation will allow you to do more efficient transfer pricing that can withstand scrutiny from the economic standpoint. But I think the value drives the transfer pricing planning and the study um, because people are seeing the cash flows. It's harder to hide from the real flow of funds. Uh, and as such, valuation and transfer pricing are often done uh, in tandem rather than having to re-justify the position after the structure's already been put in place. 